the fifth chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, beginning to read at the 17th verse. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfil. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. The conduct and consequences of national and personal life over the last weeks and months has brought to the forefront of our daily lives something that we take for granted and yet is one of the essentials of human existence, social need and interaction. The need to live and interact with other human beings, albeit in many different ways. No man is an island, said John Don, meaning that we cannot cut ourselves off completely from human interactions. We begin life in a social group that we call family. We mature and live the rest of our lives relating to other family groups, widening our experience and understanding of the need to live such lives in an orderly and meaningful way. To live our lives in relative peace and harmony requires conformity to certain actions and attitudes that we acknowledge as the law, the law under which we all live. In our Bible readings we find time and again instances and events that seem to support the Pharisees' assertion that Jesus was a lawbreaker. Again and again, Jesus broke what the Jews called the law. He did not observe the hand washings that the law laid down. He healed the sick on the Sabbath, although the law forbade it. And he was, at the last, condemned and crucified as a lawbreaker. But what was the law? The Jews of Jesus' time used the expression, the law, in four different ways. They used it to mean the Ten Commandments. They used it to mean the first five books of our Old Testament, the Pentateuch, the Torah, the books of Moses. For the Jews, these were the most important source of the law. The books contained all that was necessary, at least to begin with, to constitute the law. They use the phrase the law and the prophets to mean the whole of their scripture. And lastly, they used it to mean oral or scribal law. In the time of Jesus, it was the scribal law which took precedence. But it, that was a law which was constantly evolving as the scribes and the Pharisees continually changed or modified the rules and regulations by which Orthodox Jews lived. For the strictly Orthodox Jews, it meant keeping thousands of rules and regulations. These were literally regarded as matters of life and death within their daily lives. These were the rules and regulations, the law, that Jesus constantly broke. Yet in those words of his, do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish them, but to fulfil them. He seems to speak of the law with a reverence that one would perhaps expect of a scribe or a Pharisee, but not of a lawbreaker. So what did he mean when he said he came not to abolish the law? but to fulfil it. If we look again at the Ten Commandments, which are surely the essence and the foundation of all democratic laws, then we can readily see that their whole meaning 
can be summed up in one word, respect, or perhaps even better, reverence. Reverence for God and his name, reverence for his day, reverence for parents, life, property. These are the fundamental principles behind the Ten Commandments, a reverence for God and respect for those amongst whom we live. Without them, there can be no such thing as the law. And it was that reverence and respect for the law which Jesus came to fulfil. A reverence and respect that did not consist in obeying a multitude of petty rules and regulations, consisting not in sacrifice or conformity, but in mercy, not in legalism or outward signs of piety, but in love. Not in prohibition that people should not do things, but in the need to live lives based on the positive commandment to love. So Jesus came, not to abolish the law, that law of reverence and respect, but showing time and time again the falsehood of man-made or what was known as scribal law. Jesus' words of fulfilling the law, rather than abolishing the law, are yet another example of his teachings, which at the time the people heard with their ears, but not with their minds and hearts, and certainly not with full understanding. Jesus came to fulfil that which lay behind the law, reverence and respect. May that be the permanent basis of our own relationship with God and with others, and our own fulfilling of the law.